Good morning. It is 9 o'clock on January the 3rd, 2015. Now, in December, I tried to do daily devotions. For a while, it worked out well. And I also tried to do daily scriptures. And the two just were too much. And also, I had no um, business doing daily scriptures with you if I singly have not done them in over a year. And I've dabbled here and there, but to, to be brutally honest is that I've, I'm not great with scriptures. I'm just getting back into them. Besides my little morning devotional with you, um, I, I really just have to get back into my, my position, my, my goal with God. And um, so that's one reason why I stopped the scriptures. Um, second, it was just, it was too much. It was too much to do the devotion and upload it. And whatever time I spent doing the devotion took three to four times longer to upload it. Say if it was a 20-minute devotion, it could take up to an hour, hour and a half to, to download it. So anyway, that was the second reason. And... Um, this morning I had all intent on continuing with um, Spurgeon and, and continuing with Elizabeth, whatever her name was, the One Minute Daily Devotions for Women. And then I was going to do Jack Hayford, Glorious Morning. And um, the Lord said, look at the one on the shelf that's purple. There's a purple one on the shelf I want you to do. Okay. I said, there's, there's, there's a conclusion coming. Um, and so I looked through all of them, and there was one, just one of them that was purple or half purple. And A Man of Integrity and Forgiveness by Charles Spur um, Swindoll is Joseph. You, you may have read, read this already. If you have read this recently, you might not want to go back over it. You can go back over it. But I find that <clears throat> when you read things and then you have a different life later on or you're going through something different later, this can also apply. I was at something called Tristius. I'm not going to explain it today. I don't want to take up the time. It was like a Christian one-time retreat kind of thing. And... Um, uh, a bunch of ladies went, and they have either ladies or men. You can go, you know, and um, about in the middle of it, we were doing um, some kind of talk and discussion and, and stuff like that. And people brought a lot of books for the for the candidates, and um, I was a candidate, and I was sitting there and I I picked up twelve books. I picked, I was, I, I, I was hoarding the books I did. I've, I've read, um, f three of those books <laughs> in a year. It's okay. Uh, anyway, Joseph was sitting here and some, some lady came over and she said to the left of me, she's like, oh, you know, that Joseph book, it's, that's a really good book. You should get it. And I pick it up and I go, eh, 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 you know, and I put it down. You know, and she she gives like you know there's some really good stuff in there, and little did I know that it was the Lord leading her to tell me to to pick up this book because he he needs for me to read this book, and um, so I let it sit there, and then I think um, about maybe four to six hours later, um, I go back, and we're still in the place where they put the books. And the book was still there, and I went and I picked it up and I brought it home. So that's how I got this book. So I have never opened these pages. I'm in my pajamas still, my hair is, you know, it doesn't matter. I've never opened these pages. I took it home, put it on the shelf, and that's where it's been for the last year. Honestly. Can't say that I'm a Christian to follow. That I'm a Christian that you want to shadow. <laughs> 
Okay. So I have to read the introduction. He said yes. So maybe today is just the introduction. Let me get some water. I know I don't sound very excited right now, but once I get into it, I will be. <laughs> Okay. And this again is by Charles Swindoll. Okay, I'm at five minutes already. Starting with the introduction first. Lord, please, whatever I need to learn from this today, God, let it get in me, let it sink in me, let it grow in me, let it be a seed, Lord God, to, to what you want me to explore or do or, or just to pray on or thank God, Lord God, in your mighty name, I pray you, I, I pray, I thank you, Father, in your mighty name, and I thank you for understanding all my mistakes when I'm still sleeping. I love you, amen. I'm just all groggy. I just woke up. So, one second. The tragedy of our times drove me to read a fascinating book. Finding myself weary in all the tabloids, exploiting scandalous rumors, and investigative reports that dig into the cellars of people's private lives. I needed fresh hope that genuine heroes still exist. That some remain who model greatness. That some are still worth our respect and admiration. So I put everything else on hold as I sat down and read David Aikman's fine volume, Great Souls. Um, in less than 400 pages, based on personal observation, meticulous research, Aikman reminds his readers that indeed, there are at least six great individuals who have helped change the 20th century by their personal lives and remarkable achievements. In spite of their own imperfections and weaknesses, these very human individuals rose above the circumstances, their circumstances, overcame enormous obstacles, and committed themselves to wholesome goals with overpowering determination. As I finished the book, I realized I knew the value of human biography, who isn't inspired by a man or woman who exerts phenomenal and beneficial influence who can read about someone's courage to stand alone with single-minded vision single-minded y'all yeah. single-minded vision amidst a slippery ever eroding culture can i tell you i'm in love with him already i, I really am i'm just i'm in love with this already just the words are so rich, and it's just, it just, you can feel his passion. I feel his passion. Um, who can, who can read about someone's courage to stand alone with single-minded vision and miss a slippery, ever-eroding culture and not want to em emulate such a life? I also found myself, um, stim stimulated I'm sorry. <laughs> With fresh desire to continue this published series of biblical biographies, I began over a year ago. First David's, then Esther's. No collection titled Great Lives from God's Word would be complete without its including Joseph, a man who modeled a life anyone would consider great as, wow, I'm getting goosebumps. As I write that statement, it seems necessary that we understand what I mean by great. Having just finished his book with a title that includes the word itself, the comments of David Aikman return to mind. <coughs> the word great has many different definitions, but among them are prominent, renowned, Eminent, distinguished, lofty, noble, magnanimous, assiduous, say that one right, persistent, wonderful, and admirable, 
Um, in the Webster's Thirds International Dictionary, you can find those. The list goes on. In a theosaurus under magnanimous, one finds crate of heart or soul. That's Rogets or Rogets, R O G E T S, International Thesaurus. Those are if you want to find them. And then he elaborates with these very personal reflections with which I heartily agree. I have always personally been inspired by the lives of great people. It is hard not to be energized by the stories of how individuals have risen above adversity or suffering or have man maintained a purity in the face of great temptation. Our age with its habit of instantly judging a man or woman's life based on their fragrant, fragmentary and proverbial soundbite as often impatient with detail nuances depth wow <laughs> these words are a little big for me i have to be honest that i don't know what most of them are i do but that just to say them Excuse the horrible raspy voice today. One second. Sorry, I'm back now. Um, and then he elaborates with these very personal reflections with which I heartily agree. I've always personally been inspired by the lives of great people. And it's hard not to be energized by stories of how individuals have risen, I already read this, above adversity or suffering or have maintained a purity in the face of great temptation. Our age, with its habit of instantly judging a man or woman's life based on their fragmentary and proverbial soundbite, is often impatient with detail, nuances, and depth. I heartily agree as well. Yeah. We can talk about that afterwards. Now, I wanted to demonstrate such impatience. I've always taken time to push the pause button alongside each life in this series in order to examine carefully and appreciate fully what could be missed by the hurried reader. Amen, Jesus. Which is me. <laughs> I intend to maintain the same standard in this examination of Joseph. After all, when we discover that his story occupies more space in the book of Genesis than any other single individual, more than Adam, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, or even his own father, Jacob, we realize we are not dealing with some obscure lesser light. On the contrary, here is one of the ancient patriarchs whose presence cast a sizable shadow across the colorful landscape of Hebrew history. Here is one on the list of God's greats, a life lived for his holy, sorry, of his glory and equally significant, though he was terribly mistreated, lived high above all the too common reactions of rage, resentment, and revenge. Here is one who deliberately chose to look, to overlook unfair offenses, to overcome enormous obstacles, and model our virtue that is fast becoming lost in our hostile age. Forgiveness. More on that later. I am again indebted to several faithful and gifted folks for assisting me and, and getting this volume into your hands, David Mulberg has demonstrated a balanced blend of thoughtful understanding and gentle persuasion in helping me stay at the task. Okay, that is just, um, you know, thanks. So, well, well, I think it's about um, 15 minutes already. A man of integrity and forgiveness. 
Joseph. I couldn't help but smile. I think I'll read. Um, instead of going by paragraphs, I'll go by pages. Um, because if you want to read along with me, and we can do that, I want to tell you where I'm stopping at. Um, you know, I think that I will read up, maybe up to four or five times. Okay. I couldn't help but smile when the slogan on the page to the left fell into my hands out of an envelope that also contained the letter from a former military friend, which says, I wasn't going to say this, to err is human, to forgive divine. Then it says, neither is a Marine Corps policy. He and I both knew from experience that those eight bold words did indeed represent an unwritten policy of the Marines. At least the old corps, corps, the old corps. I don't say corps, I think of, you know, of which we were once a part. I understand it's changing these days, frankly, I'll believe it when I see it. If so, such changes are long overdue. Changes regarding forgiveness may be occurring in the ranks of the Marines, but they aren't among the ranks of humanity. I don't get mad. I get even. It is merely a harmless bumper sticker that makes people smile. It's a strong statement of painful reality. How else can we explain the... <coughs> Excuse me. How else can we explain the proliferation of lawsuits, the short fuses of American drivers, or the explosive reactions and sometimes deadly retaliations of those who feel they've been wronged? Yes. Um... Getting even has reached the level of a twisted art form in our hostile society. Humans do err, and God does forgive, but neither represents a policy most folks are willing to accept. Thankfully, there are exceptions. Every once in a while, we happen upon a life that boldly represents a contrast to the lowest common denominator. I think what I'll read one more page and then I'll end for today. I don't want these going over 20 minutes long. There's a lot to sit and hear somebody read for 20 minutes. The lowest common denominator of today's low level majority opinion. Occasionally such a purchase, sorry, occasionally such a person emerges and we are stunned by his or her greatness. This happened to me back in 1980. I decided early in the summer to read the Bible through from Genesis to Revelation before the end of the year. I hadn't finished even the first book of the scriptures before I met a biblically character whose life caused me to shake my head in amazement time after time, regardless of how he was treated. In spite of unfair and erroneous accusations, even though he was rejected, abandoned, abused, Maligned, M-A-L-I-G-N-E-D, Maligned, I think that's what that is, and forgotten. He refused to become resentful, bear a grudge, or succumb to bitterness. To completely, to be completely truthful with you, he seemed too good to be real. So I read his story again, this time much more slower and deliberately. To my amazement, a more careful reading revealed an even deeper level of patience and purity. I vowed that someday I would return to that life. I can, sorry, sometimes I just start crying. I have to deal with it. <laughs> Sometime, um, someday I would love to return to that life recorded in Genesis 37 through 50. With and with pen in hand, introduce him to the general public. Here was a man all should meet. 
That time had come at long last. It is my privilege to introduce, introduce to you a man of enormous integrity who modeled continual forgiveness. His name is Joseph. Unless I miss my guess, you will never forget this man. But why should we be surprised? His biography is found in the single most astounding book ever written, the Bible. No life recorded there is either unimportant or forgettable. The Bible is the supreme book on human personality from Adam and Genesis to Satan. In the apocalypse, its portraits are unforgettable. Augustine wrote how men wander over the earth and wonder at the rivers and the mountains and the sea and the stars, while all the time man himself is the great wonder. How fearful and how wonderful are man's terrible and glorious capacities and possibilities. It is said that every that every man's life contains sufficient, sufficient material for a great novel. And that's where we'll leave off. And I will take this bookmark over here and a little piece of paper and wrap it around it and say where I'm going to leave off. And this part is called God's Training Manual. Okay. So. I think that I actually liked a lot more of the introduction than I did the part in the first starting of the first chapter. But and it's just the first few pages, so I can't judge it yet. I can't judge it anyway, but who am I to judge a man's work based on the work of somebody in the Bible? Not at all. Okay, so I'm wrapping this piece around. I'm again. <laughs> I'm again trying to wrap this piece around. Okay, and I'm going to stick it right here. In this book. And I will come back tomorrow on the 4th, which is uh, Sunday, I believe, of January, and read probably a chapter. Like a good 20 minutes worth, and whatever that leaves us, that leaves us. And this will not be here for the duration of all the videos. I'm working on getting it gone. So, um, thank you, Father, for your insights today, and it is nice to read something with such rich vocabulary and 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 desiring to to want to know more lord god it is just it's not just slang it's not just a certain talk it is it is rich and it's beautiful and and just i i actually do want to know more and i can't wait for tomorrow thank you lord jesus in your mighty name amen so you all have a wonderful day and I will, um, you know what, um, what I'm going to do, today is the 3rd, but I'm going to post this for the 4th. And every day I do this, I'm going to post it for the following day. That makes sense? For the 4th, I'll, I'll post on the 5th. That way I'm one day ahead, just in case if I ever fall back or something. Um, I will, um, yeah. I will, and then maybe on the weekends, I'll say one day, and um, I'll do this maybe six days a week. I don't know. I'll figure it out on the way. Sorry, I just heard something. God bless you, and I'll see you again very soon.